yelling out. I didn't want to go back to where I came from. I didn't want to start over. I wasn't ready for it. I was ready for the end. And um, the only thing that stopped me was again, my little prophet. And um, I was mad at him for being in the way of me and what I thought to be my destiny, which was suicide. In terms of the relationship between him and his father and him being a father to his sons, um, Harlem and, and Justice, but definitely he, you know, he wants to be probably complete opposite, you know, in, in some ways of what his father was, you know, to him and how their relationship was. And I start to realize that this loneliness, this emptiness that I was feeling, I needed to share. So I wrote. I wrote one long verse that ended with It's aftermath and ain't nothing after that. And when I finished my verses, I called my old friend, Buster Rhymes. And I asked him to come get on the song. He came down immediately, 10 minutes, he was there. Heard the song and he said, if you want me to, you know, if you want me to get on a song and speak the truth about what I know about this situation, then I've got to tell the truth. I've got to speak the truth. i got to let them know that you were hard-headed and that you didn't listen and that these are some of the problems that have probably got you in this hole that you're trying to climb out. But climb out, my friend, climb out. finished that song, I understood. And after that song, the other songs came together like a puzzle. At that point in my life, I really wanted Dre to know that I loved where I was and that I would have been comfortable in his recording presence throughout the remainder of my career, even if it killed me, because that's when I was at my best. What I didn't realize is people never stopped believing in me. People never stopped thinking that I was good and that I was great and that I was important to hip hop. I watched him, you know, initially in the beginning stages of, of the recording, and he wasn't a happy guy, you know? He had a lot of weight on his shoulders, you know? From day to day, you know, he's still recording this album, but he doesn't know, you know, what label is on, gonna be on the back of his CD. You know, those things still had to be worked out and, and fixed and corrected and leveraged and politicked and, you know, all of that stuff is, it's, it's chaos, you know? What I tried to do was, as best I could, bring back every producer who, who helped mold me into one of hip-hop's elite MCs. Just Blaze, J.R. Rodham, Kanye West, 
another Einsteinic classic producer. He, Kanye, just he takes samples and, and makes heaven. Scott Storch, of course, you got to be in his environment. You got to fly down to Miami, put on a little gold chain, and get in his get in his realm. You know. Close, man. Jelly Roll, which is a hidden talent out here in California. Jelly Roll is one of the best producers that California has seen since uh, since a Dr. Dre. A lot of people, um, Quiet as Kept, was waiting on this album to flop. Um, but Game is a warrior, and uh, he just wanted to get it done at any cost. And uh, he had some positive help around him, and he was able to overturn those odds. So um, the vibe was was strenuous but it was it was a good vibe I, I don't like to call anybody anybody i don't like to call kobe the new michael jordan lebron the new kobe i don't like to call Irvin pope the new dre but it is what it is man i landed the first song on the doctor's advocate which is looking at you from that song i, I landed two or three other songs on his current mixtape which is 1 a.m and crazy ep is um producing most of the shit on my next album let's put it that way and cool and dre are a, a tandem that are unstoppable and we've already recorded you know um our first couple of uh tracks for um my next album but uh those are some of the producers some of my friends that have um you know really really helped me weather the storm I look up to in hip-hop, man, and you know, he, I appreciate what he does, he appreciates what I does, man, and, and I mean, what I do, and um, it's, you know, it, it's, it's, you always come out with a hit when two people, you know what I'm saying, are fans of one another, man, and, and you get in, and you just, you know, you do it for hip-hop. Right, I don't know for real, he's wearing pastel colors, I'm wearing pain of the soul of dad brothers, and them chrome gap buses, an R&B wife on the arm, I close shop, I show niggas they first Bentley, fuck up when those shop, show niggas they first ice, now they like I love you, remember when they hustle, was trying to sue Russell for what some other nigga did to them, sound sick in them. that's why I cut him off word to God, he was snitching nigga. The initial part of this, you know, it, it was challenging for him. I, I definitely feel that it was challenging, but at the same time, it was motivating. And it, um, I think, you know, some of the things that transpired actually helped him to write better, you know, to really, to really be able to illustrate his, his true feelings. Big things come in small packages, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. You crazy, I say when them niggas gon' shoot You crazy, I say when them niggas gon' drop something You don't really want a nigga, better stop from it. Cause when them things come out, we gon' drop something You crazy, I say when them niggas gon' shoot You crazy, I say when them niggas gon' drop something You don't really want a nigga, better stop from it. Cause when them things come out, we gon' drop something Man, look at the wheels, the motherfucking wheels Black low and hearts blood, you niggas know the deal Fuck Lamborghini doors, nigga, I ride stock and fuck you new rap niggas, homie, I buy pot Dude told me long time ago, enjoy his pain You sell five million records, some shit gon' change It was right, I traded the coup and got me a range No ice to play Most of my enemies, my foes, the people that despise me About face They came back with handshakes Now, it's not hard for him to illustrate his true feelings On a regular basis, you know, but I mean, to really go in, inside of, you know, how he's feeling and, and to express that with everything that had transpired, you know, I think, you know, that was the biggest motivating factor. It's what people don't know, is the niggas of Kobe Bryant, he sit there and he watched his game, he watched it, he studied it, he, sp he soaked it up. <clears throat> The nigga just sit there and he watch all these artists fall back. He watch him, he watch Dre, he watch Biff. You know what I'm saying? He watch, he studied N.W.A. He idolized it because he got N.W.A. in his chest. So I seen the nigga game in 
the rare 